I'm a lucky boy because next month I'm off to the foothills of the Himalayas to catch one of the hardest fighting fish in the world, the Golden Marseille. Of course every great fishing expedition involves a serious amount of retail therapy uh, and I'm here at Sports Fish in Reading, uh, one of the best fly and game fishing shops around uh, to see if they can kit me out with what I need. Hi Alan, well, I've got a problem for you. Okay, okay. We're, off... we're here to sort problems out. What I know you are. Well, I, I have this this fantastic reel, the Shimano, which will yeah. tow a tractor. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm yeah. after Marcia in not in uh, gentle waters, but in okay. fast current in the okay. foothills of the Himalayas. So you need something quite quite powerful for that. I do, but because we're whitewater rafting together, yeah. there, I don't want to take a great big long rod tube. I want Understood. a travel rod that okay. will tame a 50 pound fish in a raging okay. current oh. that I can match with this reel. Actually, I think we've got just the thing. This is uh, an, a nine foot travel rod, it's a travel mm -hmm. spinning rod. How many sections? It's four sections, One, so it's yeah. going to fit in your suitcase. So it's only going to be your yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly that, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Um, very strong, very powerful. It would cast lures up to 100 grams, although I, I actually have one of these myself and uh, you, you, you can push the envelope a little bit. With What's the one. biggest fish you've caught on it, Alan? Well, well all, all kinds of things. I mean, I've, I've travelled the globe with one of these, actually. Um, biggest thing would be sharp, maybe 150 pounds. So, mm -hmm. that was in Wales, actually. Well, I had a look online and there's, yep. there's plenty of lighter travel rods, but something something, yep. something that'll, uh, that'll, that'll punch this sort of weight is pretty rare. Exactly, which is uh, why it's a popular rod for us because um, you know we, we have uh, fly fishermen they, they're going off to the Indian Ocean, the Caribbean. They want a rod that they can use for jacks. Yeah. Ca ca casting distance with biggish poppers and things, mm -hmm. and uh, but they, they don't want a really kind of full-on big popper rod. That's too no, no. too heavy. Well, let, let me see if we can balance the reel on it because it's yeah, absolute, sure, sure, I give mean, it a go. I think a lot of people make a mistake in, in buying rods without uh, out <laughs> putting the reel putting on the, first. Yeah. Chuck Would you mind grabbing the, the end and I'll just, uh, sure. just just pretend to be a golden marseille somewhere? In I'm not as pretty as a golden marseille. No. That's right. I, I think I think that's that's going to hit the spot perfectly. Right, Alan. So I need lures to go with this uh, okay. rod you persuaded me to buy. Uh, I need right. something that's going to be able to dive down to about a meter okay. and catch fish, attract fish uh, in quite fast uh, flowing waters. Okay. So, so what have you got? Okay, we're well looking for something that's quite roughy tufty, I guess. Yeah. It, it's, uh, you know, it's going to take a bit of a battering. Um, let me see, maybe maybe something like this. It's got a metal lip to it, so you, if it dives down and hits a rock at the bottom, you're not going to smash the. If it's plastic, they, those can, can oh, break. Oh, CD footed, yeah. I, I, are you familiar with that lure? I fished, I fished these in Argentina for the Golden Dorado, okay, and, they, and it was right. that type of water. These are incredibly tough. I mean, look at the tremendous trebles yeah, on yeah. it. And, Dead uh, strong, yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, the parlor are a superb yeah, it's mate. Kind of, it's kind of the benchmark for that kind of look. Oh yeah, so I can see that doing some damage. Brilliant. And of course it'll swim like this. Yeah, it's got a, ni a nice kind of roll to it when yeah. it comes through the water. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's all very well getting the gear, but will it work? I'm off to the Kennet and Avon Canal to see if this setup, designed for a 40 pound mass here, can catch me a pike. Well, we've brought the tackle, hopefully strong enough to catch the Marseille and we're on the beautiful Kennet and Avon Canal here just outside Hungerford uh, run by Reading and District Anglers Association and I'm joined by my friend and colleague John Chain from the Angler Trust. John you're our resident lure expert. And the one thing that comes up all the time is the traditional lure to catch Marseille on is the spoon. So something something big and shiny like that. Well, that does not look like a fish to me John. Well once it's in the water because of the shape of the blades and the fact it's uh, it's convex, right. it really has a lot of movement. And especially in running water, you could just hold that against the current, and it will dance all over the place. And so you're you're happy for me to take this to India then? Um, possibly, possibly. Might not come back. Well, you remember what happened the last time I let no. you know, Martin? You took this off to Argentina, as I remember, and look what I got back. That's all right, isn't it? It's a bit chewed up. Shows it catches fish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, at least the metal, they hopefully won't quite manage to mash so much. And uh, a massier don't have a lot of teeth, so we might be all right this time. Well, we'll try this out on the canal for a pike just to see if it catches fish, but I'll take that one. We and now do. I've got from my box one of those, but I'm not sure that's really what I want for massier. Well, is not it? really, because that's a surface popper, which is fantastic for those big um, saltwater species. That so that goes catch. plump, plump, plump. And, and but yeah, but I don't think not that's in a gonna, river. Not going to be any use for massier. You want something that's going to dive, dive down. If you want to get something a bit deeper into the deep pools, well, this is this is a newer version of the one you mashed before in a oh, different colour. Oh, this is the shad wrap. That's isn't it? right. That's a super shad wrap 
from Rapala, and that's a, a classic lure. It's been around for a long time, still catches a lot of fish. And, um, so well, that would be really good if I could if I could uh, smash up one in Argentina and another one in India. Yeah, that sounds about right. You could dine out. That's so I'll take that one. And what else are you going to give me? Well, there's a couple of other alternatives here. This is a lovely lure. Now, this is a much more modern lure. In I can't afford to lose that. This is a three-piece swim bait, and in the water, the sinewy action Ooh. you get off these is so lifelike. Now, that's a nice shiny one. But here's one that I've actually used a bit, and as you can see, oh, it's look got at the, rubber. I the, see it's the, got the rubber bite, at the end. You've got yeah. bite marks in the tail. Yeah. You've got it's just been roundly abused, and that's had a few twenty-pound pike in it. That one really. And you reckon that that'll be okay in fast water, though? Yeah, well, it, doesn't, it hasn't got a hasn't got a diving lip on well, it. Has it's, a, it? it's a slow sinking lure, right? So especially if you're fishing little back eddies and places Whoa. like that, just out of yeah. the flow then that'll sit down and then once it's in the floor the tail will go like mad so well I'll, ta I'll take one of those and hopefully hand it back damaged okay <laughs> the uh, other thing is as well depending maybe not so good in fast flows but in other parts this is um what's known as a jerk bait and that's uh, a lure solid wood this one's actually handmade and hand finished by a guy a, i know from finland what a beautiful which lure. is when you think that's just hand painted by someone it's fantastic isn't it's it? almost too good to fish with well i do worry when i cast that too near a tree yeah but um they've got a lovely action in the water if you just give the the rod a bit of movement they go side to yeah. side to side like to that, side yeah? yeah and the pike especially find that irresistible well perhaps you can catch a pike on that later on we'll give Proof it a go that it works we'll give it a go so there we go, a whole range of boys' toys to catch a Marseille on the other side of the world, but we're going to try and put some of them to use in the nearest thing we can do to replicate Marseille fishing, which is pike. We're going to have a go at just fishing down the sides of these boats here, because they're always um, an excellent place for, uh, for pike to hide under. They like the cover, they like the shelter, and it tends to be a little bit warmer under the boats. And one good tip is, if you've got a whole line of boats, and one of them's got smoke coming out the chimney and the others haven't. Whether it's true or not, but I tend to feel that's the one they'll be sat under because it's just going to be that little bit warmer there. Right, well this is friendly competition. John the lure expert is going to use proper pike lures and will hopefully catch us a proper pike. Me, I'm going to try and catch a pike on this piece of kitchenware, which I'm told is what the old British army officers in the days of the Raj used to use for Marseille fishing. Uh, certainly Marseille tackle would need to be a good deal stronger than the average tackle we use for, um, for pike. You can usually get them into the bank pretty quickly, pike, you know. Um, but mass oh, yes, we're in. got here then expert well it's just a tiny little jack but it shows they work there we go but nice thing about these oh look he's had the tail off my lure oh bitten the, bitten the tail straight off i'm well, glad you got something out of the experience oh just calm down little fish Good job. Now let's pop him back Well, congratulations, John. Thank Not the much. biggest and hardly a Marcia. No, no, but it was caught in a homemade lure, so it counts as double. Well, I'm learning all the time on fishing. Absolutely. The uh, Kennet and Avon uh, pike have clearly never been to India, so I'm giving up on the Marcia spoon in favour of some more traditional lures made by a Polish company called Salmo. Supposed to imitate a mullet, which are not commonly found in canals, but it's a fishy looking lure bit of colour in it, could be alright. Now just when I thought I'd caught the smallest pike in the canal, I found his baby brother. <laughs> but they're very, they're very sweet. The interesting thing about the young ones is they're much, um, much shinier, much sort of um, silverier and white than the adults. Once the adults get the camouflage, they get these gorgeous mottled greens, but they're actually quite a bright fish when they're, uh, when they're small, the pike. Well, we've christened the Marseille rod. Not with a Marseille, but with a lovely little Kennet and Avon pike from the Reddings Water at uh, Froxfield. So, what a great way to end the session. I'm happy with the gear. Um, certainly more than capable of, uh, of handling Marseille and a bit overgun perhaps for some of the pike we caught, but uh, 
John had a couple, as he always does, and uh, even I managed one on this rather, rather, rather lovely little Polish lure called a Salmo Sweeper. Well, with a pike in the bag, that certainly proves that my new Snowbee rod can catch fish. Whether or not it can catch me a world-class marseer, you'll have to find out in the next episode of Fishing Britain. And if you want to fish in the Kennet and Avon Canal, up here near Hungerford, take a look at the Redden and District Angling Association website.